you ever turned on the tap in your boat and nothing comes out? Today we're going to have a quick look at fresh water pumps and what goes wrong and how you can replace it. There are various brands and styles, they all work pretty much the same way, so we're going to have a quick look to see what actually goes on inside. Most pumps have a head, as you can see here, and a motor at the back. A couple of screws and you can pull the head off. Now what actually goes on inside is the motor will spin a follower which pushes these plungers forwards and backwards against a large rubber diaphragm and there's, as you can see in this one, four separate sections that the diaphragms move in and each one will individually pump water and it's, that's what gives those pulsing sound and the sensation through the boat. What can commonly happen though is somewhere in that rubber diaphragm which runs through this whole plate here is you might get a small piercing or split which lets the water through and we actually have a fifth spot here as well and this is where the real culprit is. If you line that up back in here, we have this little plunger here. That's our pressure switch. So once the fresh water pump achieves pressure in the boat, you normally hear it turn off. Uh, it's actually pushed that diaphragm, stretches with all the water pressure against there and pushes against the little switch you can see behind here. And that straight away shows on this particular pump what failed. A little red dot inside there is pushed in which means the pressure switch is stuck on. If the pressure switch is on, the motor's not running, there's no water flowing. And that is the most common fault that we ever see in any brand of a fresh water pump. You can go to the extent of buying a rebuild kit, but quite often at this point you don't know what else the water's got into, you're better off buying a new pump. So if you talk to your Riviera dealer or the local channelry, ask for a pump that either matches the pump you've got, a good thing to do is actually just take your phone down into your engine room or wherever your pump's located, take a photo of the brand and model, but also note what fittings are on the end in case that pump's no longer made and is obsolete and you need to get a similar pump and a couple of adapters to suit. A lot of boats have very similar plumbing systems on them. Uh, this is the whale system, very widely used. I'm just going to show you quickly how to remove the plumbing. So the first step, if you, unless your pump's already failed, this won't be a problem, is relieve the pressure out of the system. And then you actually push the plumbing fitting you're using in, and there's a grey clip in here. And it's actually the retainer. So you push the plumbing in, and then push against the grey clip while you pull the plumbing out, and the hose will come out. Nothing else required once you refit. You just got to keep in mind there is an o-ring in there so you want to keep everything clean and not scratch the plumbing and then it's as simple as undoing the plug or cutting through the wires depending how the pumps connected to the boat and normally there's four screws mounted on the fixings against the bulkhead or wherever the pumps mounted you can then take the pump out and either recreate the plug onto a new pump or get your new pump mounted on and connect the wires in applicable method and then it's as simple to refit the, the plumbing again make sure you insert it you'll hear it click sometimes but keep pushing until it goes all the way in and your confidence all the way in. You can then pressurize the system later and give it a good jiggle to make sure it's not leaking. Same setup though, if you just put the screws in, sometimes out in the boat, we don't have all the tools on hand. You can just temporarily mount, mount the pump even against the old pump, even with some cable ties or similar, just until you get home you can get it fitted properly. On the wiring side of things, very sim simple. There'll be two wires, positive and negative. Recreate what was on the boat originally. Quite often though you'll have a third wire. This one's not so critical. Sorry, I put it the wrong way around there. The black and the red obviously you're positive and negative. The white is a signal wire. So some boats will have an indicator light on a uh, indicator panel. Um, it may be just near, mounted near the water gauge, something like that, to show you whenever the pump's running. You don't have to have that connected for the pump to run. So again, you can do that when you get back home. But otherwise, if you've got the, the whole lot ready to go with the plug pre-fitted, you can plug it in and that way you'll get your signal come up on, on your screen or on your dash, wherever the light is. Connect it back in. Next step is obviously turn on any valves or anything that are controlling water. Turn on every tap in the boat and bleed all the air out of the system. If you have any stocks of air built up in tubes throughout the boat, as the pump achieves pressure, it compresses that air and that air will gradually reduce in pressure and the pump will kick in again. So every one or two minutes you might hear the pump go brrr every now and then. So that the trick is bleed every tap throughout the boat and you'll hear all the air gush out and then turn the tap off and you should be good to go.